Hi, welcome to Python application programming again, module 2. So last session we were discussing about iteration. So if you recall, we understood about an iteration variable, a concept of iteration and finite loop and infinite loop, what mistakes we can do and how to come out of a finite loop or maybe how to come out of a loop where we understood that there is a keyword called break which will help us. So we will continue with the session. So again, yeah, uh, we took a break and came back and we told continue and uh, to our surprise, the keyword is also continue, good, yeah. So now uh, we have some special things like uh, we have a looping structure. So in the loop, I want to come out of the loop, right, after some set of statements being executed, but not all statement inside a loop. What is the keyword or what is the concept that is available? Break. We have a, 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 a word which is opposite to that with small change in the functionality and that word is continue. So, we can use a word break inside a while loop to come out of while loop. We have something called as a keyword continue which will continue executing with small modification. Right? So, continue is a statement, continue is a statement which will help us what? End the current iteration. So now, end current iteration. So if you recall, last session we discussed about break, but what did we tell? We told break is a statement which ends the current iteration. Continue is also a statement which ends the iteration, but what is the change? If this happens to be a break statement, ends the current iteration, so end of loop structure we come the control comes out of the loop structure start executing further but what continues does continue does end of the current iteration end of the current iteration but control will not come out of the while loop control will go back to the control statement the loop statement so in that case what break does so assume that we have iterated twice two times we have done then third time i encounter a break i come out of the while loop go further. Now, replace break with a continue. So, first iteration done, second iteration done, third iteration I am going, I have continue. This continue will break the iteration, but it will not come out of the while loop or maybe it will not come out of the loop, it will go back to loop again. So, further statements what were after continue will never execute, provided that statement continue is executed. Now, the continue statement ends the current iteration, but what happens is, it will go back to the loop again, start the next iteration. So now, when you look at the iteration structure, so first iteration, second iteration, third iteration going on, we have a break, come out of the loop, start executing. If I replace that with continue, first iteration, second iteration, third iteration started, we encountered continue, statements under the while loop are not executed because we encounter continue, go back to the while, start iterating the next iteration. So now, we will try to understand this based on some example here. So, the example that I have taken is, is from the previous. What was my previous example? I try to read a data, display that. Read data, display that. Till I encounter a word called done. Till I encounter a word called done. So, now same example we slightly modify and add one continue keyword to that. Right? So, while true. So, in that case it becomes an infinite loop because it is always true. So, condition will never become false. So, we always execute these statements. Now, in these statements, we have added two things. One, continue, second, break. Now, what is this line? This line is nothing but reading data. So, now I have read data from the keyboard. Next, I will check whether my first character is hash. So, now look at this line. Line is nothing but the data that I have read. Line of 0 is nothing but the first character in the data that I have read. Example, if I have read hello there, then I am checking the first character h, where the concept here is what? Index 0. So, first character is at index 0. So, I will check whether line of 0 is equal to hash. If yes, then I will tell continue, for which in our case it is not that. If line is done, so we have what we have read, hello there. So, line is not done. So, it will tell print line. So, it will print, print the output. Second, as this is an infinite loop, again control will come back, still it is true, then it will read a line. Now, we have read a line this, we have read a line. So, in that case, we take this as an input. Now, we check if line of 0 equal to hash, 
yes line of 0 is hash here. So, now once line of 0 is hash what are we supposed to do? We told if line of 0 is equal to hash then continue. So, continue got executed. Now, what continue will do? 1 end the current iteration, end the current iteration stop in that case these statements are not executed. So, line equal to done break nothing is executed because it end the current iteration. What next? Go back to the loop. So, it will go back to the loop which is nothing but true again. So, now what happened? Once we encountered continue we went back here. But instead of continue if, if it was a break then what we would have done? We would have come out of the loop but here it is a continue stop executing further inside the while loop go back to the condition. So, again line equal to so that is the reason why we have not printed anything of this for this input there is no output at all. Why no output? Because we are not printing we told continue. So, stop go back to the while loop. So, still it is true we read the next line our next line is print this next line is print this. So, it will read is line of 0 hash no because it is p here. So, condition does not hold good it will come back sorry go further go further if line equal to done no it is not done. So, break will not execute go further print line. So, it will print the line that we have read. So, the text that we have read it is printed again next time we read done. So, line is done it will check line of 0 is hash no it is not hash. So, continue will not execute it will come back here line equal to done yes line is done. So, now what will happen break. So, what this break will do this break as usual end the current iteration. So, this will not be executed, but along with that it will come out of the loop. So, after coming out of the loop what are the statements after the loop print done. So, it will print done. So, do not get confused with the done and done this is capital D which is outside the while loop. So, this done is nothing, but I am trying to check whether this statement whether that word has been given by the user if yes stop executing the while loop terminate the while loop come out of the while loop which is nothing but done using break. So, now this example will make you sure that what if I use continue what if I use break. So, break we understood that in the last session where we told stop executing and come out of the while loop stop executing further while loop and come out of the while loop in this session we started with what continue what it does stop executing the statements under while loop stop executing after all the statements under while loop after continue after we stop where are we going we are not going out of the while loop we still stay back in the while loop we start the next iteration we start the next iteration. So, now what to be very clear to you one if you are using a break break what it does stop the execution of while statement or will make it still simpler stop the iteration come out of the while loop. What if it is continue stop the iteration right here we are we got continue stop this iteration go to the next iteration start the next iteration. So, you should have a clear picture like what if I use break statement what if I use continue statement. So, I will repeat again continue statement ends the current iteration stops the current iteration and jumps to the loop and start the next iteration. So, in that case it will go back. So, this is what continuous. So, if I encounter continue stop executing go back to the loop again next iteration will start. If I encounter break simple stop come out of the while loop. So, when to use break if I want something like I want to stop my iteration I want to come out of the while loop use break. I want to still stay back in my while loop further statements not to be executed use continue. So, you should have a clear picture like when to use continue, when to use break. Right? This is a diagram same diagram right. So, which we discussed about break we have something with the continue. So, if you recall what did we do for break? If this was break then what will happen my control if this gets executed my control will come out of the while loop, but it is not a break here it is continue. So, if it is continue further statements are not executed go back to the loop go to the start of the next iteration. So, this is what continuous right. So, in the case again you have two options one true 
you can have a continue go back here you can have a break you can come out or condition falls you can come out so you have multiple options all these options like coming out is based on the condition here so in our example this will never be executed in our example this line this loop will never be executed why because of this condition because it is always true but what if I add a break here so if you add a break it will help us to come out from the while loop to an outside world but not to this part right so do not get confused if I use break what happens right so if you use break from the while loop construct it will come out of the while loop but according to the condition coming out is not possible the reason we have made that condition is always true so this no part or false part will never come into picture so this is what we have written right so if it is continue then stop go back to the while loop start the new iteration if it is break yeah simple come out here that is all right so continue and break functionality is this and do we use continue and break in normal programming definitely yes we do use it so if it is not necessary that it should be a finite loop or infinite loop let this be anything let this be anything we will not worry about that but we can use still continue we can still use break so only thing that you need to be kept in mind is what break stop come out while loop continue stop go back again that is the difference then we understood something like infinite loop infinite loop right so this is something a word which we come across regularly like definite indefinite loop so in that case there is something small change here right so our while loop our while loop just now what we discussed is of type indefinite loop the while loop what we had discussed now is of indefinite loop now why they are called like that because they keep going until a logical condition becomes false so now what we are telling here we never tell that okay go for these number so we tell till this logical condition till the logical condition becomes false keep executing that there are other things which we call that as a infinite loop infinite loop what is this one it is called as indefinite we, we define that right so we know that how many time number of times till this logical condition becomes false now there are few things like loops which have easy to use right but they will terminate they will terminate an example for this is what the loops we have seen so far are pretty easy to that is examine to see if they will terminate or if they will be in an infinite loop so in that case we know two things one termination or an infinite loop now there are specific things like harder things to be sure if a loop will terminate or not so what this slide talks about simple one it tells me like there is something called as indefinite loop there is something called a looping structure which is easy where we have two things one a termination is possible or they are into an infinite loop but what is little harder to make sure that a loop will terminate so it is very important that harder thing that we need to understand we have to make sure that loop will terminate so what was our earlier example concepts right so did we make our loop terminate definitely yes so maybe our condition made the loop to get terminated or maybe a break statement made the loop to be terminated so we followed the method where we are trying to make sure that the loop gets terminated so if loop does not get terminated then there is no point that we have it is clear understanding that we have a made a mistake in our programming right so definitely we need to have as a one termination statement which helps us to come out of that the looping structure now so how do i make sure that always i have a something called as a termination statement best is what we will make it as a loop which we define so we know that definite loop it is a definite loop so what is the best example right so the best example that we have taken is a file now in a file i know that there are 10 lines i know that there are 10 lines 
So, in that case I can make sure that I read all those 10 lines and come out. So, here what is that? It is a finite set of things. A, another example that I can take instead of a file take input from a keyword sorry keyboard sorry take input from a keyboard. What input do you want to take? Take numbers, numbers what numbers like 1, 4, 9 and so on. Now, how to terminate? I will tell if somebody types minus 1, if somebody types minus 1, I want to stop reading data. If somebody types minus 1, I want to stop reading data. Now, if somebody types other than minus 1 numbers, I want to take them. Like example, somebody will type 44, the other user will type 22, maybe 6, 9 and 4 and so on. So, we will make sure that all are positive numbers. So, now when I get numbers like this, I want to consider, when I get minus 1, I want to stop. Now, think and tell me whether it is finite. Do I know like this example in a file there are 10 lines where I have finite set of things like 10 lines in a file, but take this example. Do I know how many numbers the user will give? Never. So, I do not know. Like one user may give 5 numbers, the another user for the same program may give 500 numbers, I do not know. So, it is not a finite set of things here. So, for our example like a file, it is finite in nature, right. So, writing data to a file can be infinite, but when I try to read data from a file, I have 10 lines in the file, 10 times I read each line, my job is done. So, I have finite set of things for which we have a definite loop, right. So, we can write a loop for which for this kind of examples for these kind of examples we can write a loop very easy to run the loop once for each of the item. So, in our example if a file has uh, maybe a set has 10 items a set has 10 items then I can run each time pick up one item I can run each time pick up one item and finish my construct or finish my programming. Now, so in that case, I know how many number of times I am trying to read this data. Right? So, these kind of examples like finite set of things, all those examples will define as what? We know definitely like how many number of times we are supposed to run that particular set of code. So, here these loops, the example that we have discussed, not about numbers, the file example or maybe finite set of think example that we are trying to discuss is an example for which we can write a loop to read all those things. So, these loops for these kind of examples are called as definite loops. Why? Because we execute exact number of times. Example, if I have a group where I have 5 members in the group, where I have 5 members in the group, then I want to process each member, I want to process each member, fine no problem, we have set of code which does for us, but how many times you will do processing, 5 times, why 5? Because we have 5 members. So, for a finite set of elements, we appropriately correctly know that how many number of times we are supposed to do that processing. So, we know exact number of times to be done, which is called as what? Definite loop. So, we say that uh, definite loop iterates through a uh, members of a set. So, in that case we have defined one process in our example there are 5. So, how many times each process is done? 5 times. So, we know definitely that number of times that is being done, the number of uh, uh, maybe the job that is to be done we know for how many number of times right that is what definite loop is. A simple example for a definite loop, a simple example for a definite loop for now, when you look at that, what on which data we are processing, this is the data. Okay, do not worry about what is this square bracket, the numbers inside that, that will be our further discussion, right. For time being, we will treat this as a group, we will treat that as a group. So, do not get into conclusion that there is a some keyword called group in Python, no, it is an example. So, this is one group where the elements are 5, 4, 3, 2 and 1. Now, when you look at we have a finite set of elements. So, what is our finite set? These 5 elements, there are 5 elements in this. So, now what are we doing? We are doing some processing 
we are doing some processing for what for each element so in that case we process first time second time third time fourth time fifth time and come out so we are able to tell that this particular processing or whatever the job that we want will be done for five times so five iterations will be done so we exactly know that we are doing five iterations but in our earlier example what we had either with the break or continue recall that example that example was trying to read from a keyboard and writing onto a screen so you are reading writing on a screen but this you continued how many times we never defined that it will run for 10 times or 100 times or nothing we do not know because this is completely based on the word that is entered by a user like done stop so if it does not uh, enter done then we still do the same thing so we do not know how many iterations it has taken or how many iterations it will take but here we definitely know that this will take 5 iterations because it is a definite loop so this is an example for a definite loop for i in is an example for a for loop right so what are we doing for i in so in python we have a special kind of for loop for uh, a for loop called what for in for loop is uh, syntax is for in so where for a variable in this particular set so what is that iteration so here the value of i will will iterate through each of the element in the set so first time what will be the value of i 5 next time value after this iteration when it goes back to for loop then what will be value of i 4 next 3 next to 2 next 1 and after that end come out of the for loop so here we do not have a condition like true or false here trying to check and then come out no it iterates through all the elements each one of the, each one at a time each one at a time and do the necessary job and then come out now when you run this program assuming that top of is also correct perfect below code is also correct when you look at this for loop for i in 5 so first value of i is 5 print i 5 is printed next i will iterate 4 4 is printed next i value is 3 3 is printed similarly i is 2 i is 1 next no more elements automatically the control will come to the come out of the for loop so in the in turn it will print blast off so we got the output so in this example in our previous session example if you compare we had a while loop where we told condition is true so it becomes infinite so we do not know indefinite but we made it to come out of the loop because we used one keyword called break and we made sure that it will come out of it but this kind of loops are called as definite because we know we know like how many number of iterations this particular uh, statement under a loop will be executing so in our example it is 5 times because we have 5 elements if the elements are 10 fine no problem 10 iterations will be taken so we know exactly number of times that particular statements will be executed so this is one example for a definite loop now another example for again a definite loop with small change now in our previous example all these were numbers in the current example instead of numbers we have taken that as string so understanding wise same to same again right so here uh, do not get confused with the words that I am using here friends is a group name with three elements with the three elements so in that case what I have written for friend in friends so in that case this friend is a variable which will iterate through this so in that case the first value is Joseph second value is this third value is this so every time it gets the first value it will print happy new year with the name so in that case this print statement this whole print statement will be executed how many number of times three times one for this element second for this element third for this element so if you look at the output yeah first time second time and third time and finally there are no more input given so this will end that loop control will come out print done finish so now what is the difference between our previous example and this example this example is about strings previous example is about number but rest of thing will remain same almost right so conceptually it is same but what we are what the change that can occur 
this statement, this logic can change, right? So, instead of just printing happy new year, we may have our appropriate logic of our whatever our choice is. So, based on problem statement, we can try to figure out what will be our logic here. So, there are loops which are indefinite, there are loops which are definite in nature. Right? So, where definite means what? We know that how many iterations it will take, that loop will run how many number of times. But indefinite we, we cannot predict like this will run for these number of times, but still we can come out of that looping structures. So, same example with a diagram that is all right for i equal to 5 to 1 then print i print. So, in that case every time i takes a new value 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 correspondingly the statements are executed. So, if you look at uh, the statement print i move i ahead. So, in that case it goes to next element, next element, next element when it is done what is the meaning of done? There are no more elements here then I will come out of the loop. So, exactly I know like how many times I will be inside this. I know based on that after that condition has met I will come out here. So, here what is the condition? Condition is nothing. So, trying to read each element from the group. So, when I reach end of that element automatically I will come out of it. Right? So, here uh, in, uh, in this example, in this example, so we have explicit iteration variable that changes each time through a loop. Now, so here there are uh, normally in any programming language you will come across implicit explicit right. So, you need to specify or maybe you will not specify. So, if you look at this for in statement you never told that I, you are incrementing i by 1 or you are incrementing the index by some other no nothing. So, these need not be 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So, if you, a common thought that comes into mind is what i equal to 5 i equal to i plus 1, i equal to 6, but is i is 4. So, here it is not the increment, it is about accessing the elements in the array, elements in the group, right. So, that con common concept for i equal to 0, i condition, i plus plus, that is not the case here. So, it is about accessing elements. So, we are not interested in the value, we will take them as elements, that is all, it will be easy for us. So, i will become first element, next iteration second element and so on. So, the iteration variable, iteration variable moves through the sequence or set. So, it is not that increment i by 1, no right. So, it is about the in the set element accessing by a iteration variable. So, our i in this example is still an iteration variable. Are there any changes in i? Definitely yes, but we are not explicitly telling that it is understood. It is internally taken care that i gets incremented to the next element. So, uh, just to look at our for loop where i is nothing but an iterative variable and this is nothing but our sequence, right. So, we told i if it is an iterative variable we, we got one like in previous session we discussed like yes for i in the loop there should be some changes that we are doing definitely we are doing that changes, but we have not written the code for doing the change, but still it is happening, right. So, if you look at the iteration variable iterates through sequence iterates through sequence this iteration variable, then this code the block body code is executed once for each value in the sequence. So, this is what i equal to 5 execute, i equal to 4 execute, i equal to 3 execute. So, for every iteration it picks up that value and execute the set of statement answer the body part. Then the iteration variable uh, automatically moves through the values in the sequence. So, in that case I need not do that as an user. I need not write a program to increment the value of i or make changes for the i. Automatically the value of i will keep shifting to each element in the group. Okay. Uh, there are some tricks while making some looping structures. So, uh, a, a small hint that is given is like smart loops. right? So, best thing is what? Set some initial values for the variables set some initial values for the variables, then we will have a looping structure for things to do, look for something to be done for each entry, look for something to be done for each entry and very important updating a variable. And this variable will make sure that uh, 
like we want to come out. So, now when you look at there are for loop is there with initialization, condition, then increment or decrement and there is another one called as for in. Right? So, both of them does same for us, but what is smart about loops? The best thing is what? Use this concept. Right? If I convert or if I start writing program, if I start visualizing usage of for in loop, then I become very much familiar. I will not try to use the normal concept of for loop, I will go for for in. Right? So, if you look at for in is the looping structure. So, when you look like this, now what we can forget or what is our headache that is being removed is in this our iteration variable, our iteration variable we need not modify, we need not change. Why? That is taken care by this looping structure. What is the looping structure name? For in. So, in this case, if you go back to our previous example, this example, look at this logic, this is our logic, I am printing only n, that is all, nothing else I am doing, but still I am able to iterate through all the values here. So, I being an iterative variable, I being an iteration variable, but I am not modifying anything in the loop, but still I am achieving that, that is the advantage of our in structure. Right? So, best thing is what? Forget about this, we will try to figure out how I can incorporate for in inside my programming. So, that becomes my smart, smart that I can use with a for loop. So, set some initial values for the variables, then use for in kind of looping structure, then write whatever is necessary, updation of variables or anything, but do not worry about iteration variable, do not worry about iteration variable, I will skip this. Why to skip? For in will take care of it. So, as a programmer, I am safe. Then look for the variable, okay, continuing. So, this is outside the for loop, this whole thing is inside the for loop. So, this is one advantage of using a foreign data structure. Now, same example, same example, nothing more, just a print statement we have updated. So, print before it will print, done, next for things. So, first time it is 9, next time it is 41, 12, 13, next time 74, next time 15, we are printing things. So, it gets printed. Then after all that, after the number of iteration 15, there are no more elements, print the final statement after, it is printing after. So, this is an example like what? So, what is before and what is after and what data we get as an output. So, the advantage again for in this thing, thing thing is our iteration variable, iterative variable, but are we modifying anything in the for loop? Nothing, but still are we achieving it? Still is it an iteration variable? In the loop it gets changes? Yes, it does, but we are not doing as a program, internally it is taken care. So, things first time it is none, things next time it is 42 and so on. Now, so using that concept, we want to look for what is the largest number what is the largest number. So, in the we have set of numbers here and we want to find the largest number. So, now we can use again the for statement. So, whether to use a for statement with a normal initialization, condition, increment, decrement or we, we will use make a choice like for in. right? So, just now we told like smarter thing is to use for in, for i n in type of loop. Right? So, now what is the concept behind this? Simple. I will start from 9, I will go till 15, I will go till 15, keep comparing the elements, keep comparing the elements. Now, I want the largest element, there are hundreds of logic, the simplest logic is what? Let the largest be 9, so I will tell let largest be 9, then I will take next number, I will compare these two, then I found out that 41, so I will make this as largest, I will update this as largest, then I will compare these two. I will not update this. I will compare that 40, the largest which is 41 with 3, I will not update that. Then 41 with 74, yes, it is largest. So, I will make largest pointing to 74, I will I'll discard this. Next, 74 compared with 15, no, I will not make changes. I will further, there are no more elements. Now, I found out my largest element which is nothing but 74. 
right. So, there are multiple logics, but one of the simplest logic is this for which I can use a for loop for what start from 4 sorry start from 9 go till 15 yeah I can do that. So, I can write for some variable in this list every time I get a first element sorry every time I get an element compare that with the previous element. So, what I can do I can initialize like my largest equal to minus 1 or something assuming that all are positive always. So, based on my initial value I can decide the value provided what is my data set right. So, I cannot predict whatever I want, but very important that based on the data set what is available I can have an initial value. So, what I told it is a program here. So, now if you go back here all are positive values. So, now we have come to a conclusion that my input will be always positive and what I want to find is the largest number. So, I can take initial value as minus 1. So, what we have done in the program we have defined one variable called largest so far initial value minus 1. So, next we are printing the value before entering into the loop we are printing. So, it is in this case before largest number that is minus 1. So, now we will start with what are the values inside this, how do we figure out and what are the uh, logic behind this. So, now what we have done is we understood the logic here like what we will start from here compare this make one variable. So, that it is pointing and further you end up here come out we have the largest element for which we told we will use a logic called for in for in structure right. So, maybe uh, next session we will talk about this uh, code the how, how is that how is this code the logic that we have understood converted that into a, a code and try to understand each of this input and the corresponding output. So, in this session we understood like there are looping structures of different type one a looping structure which is infinite in nature which is uh, how do I bring that into a finite and there are looping structures which are finite in nature already predefined that it will run for n number of times for which we took an example of a for loop right or for in structure. Then we, we are trying to figure out what now given a set of numbers which will be my largest number where the logic is done, but the code part we will take up that in the next session right. Thank you.